So a major difference that separates gases from liquids and solids is the spacing between particles. So when considering liquids and solids, we need to figure out what's holding the particles together. Another way of saying that is what's keeping the particles from turning into a gas and spacing far apart. The key concept behind this is polarity. We talked about this earlier in the year when we talked about molecules and bonds being polar. And we said that polar molecules will attract each other. So polar molecules will hold on to each other and keep things from turning into a gas. We talked about polarity when we talked about Vesper theory. Remember all the different shapes that we learned when we did Vesper? And we talked about whether the molecules and the bonds are polar. When we discussed the polarity of bonds, we looked at electronegativity values. And we looked at a range of electronegativity values separating things from being purely covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. When discussing polarity of molecules, that's when we had to look at the shape. And we said that we had to look at the symmetry, or more precisely the asymmetry of molecules to figure out if they're a polar or not. We looked at asymmetry of molecules showing different atoms around a central atom or lone pairs on a central atom. And we looked at molecules like nitrogen trifluoride, water, carbon dioxide, methane, and fluoromethane to figure out if they're polar or not. So it's been a little while since we've done this, so let's remind ourselves how we can figure out if molecules are polar or not. The nitrogen trifluoride has 26 valence electrons, seven from each of the fluorines and five from the nitrogen. So if I put the nitrogen in the middle, fluorine, 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 I have 26 electrons to play with, so bond, bond, bond. That gives me 20 left. Go around the outside, put six around each of the fluorines. That's 18. So that gives me two left, and I can put two on the nitrogen. Now, if you remember your Vesper, this would be a trigonal pyramid shape. Four sites around the central atom, but a lone pair. And when we're looking at polarity, it's this lone pair right here that determines polarity. That lone pair gives us asymmetry about the central atom. So nitrogen trifluoride is a polar molecule. Water, we've seen a bunch. That's our eight valence electrons. We have oxygen in the middle with two hydrogens. That gives us four and this. And as we draw the Lewis structure, this looks like a nice symmetric molecule. It looks linear. But we have to remember Vesper. This isn't a linear molecule. This is a bent molecule. And once again, it's these lone pairs that are leading to asymmetry. So when you see lone pairs around your central atom, you should think that your molecules are going to be asymmetric, so the molecules will be polar. Carbon dioxide is another old favorite. We've drawn the Lewis structure like this, loaded the electrons around the oxygen, but then in order to satisfy our octet rule, we made double bonds. And so that's our linear molecule. No lone pairs on the central atom the same element around a central atom, so this is a nonpolar molecule. This is perfectly symmetric. Methane, another favorite. This also has eight valence electrons, like water. Everything is filled up with these single bonds, so this is a tetrahedral molecule, also symmetric. So like carbon dioxide, methane is a nonpolar molecule. Fluoromethane replaces one of the hydrogens in methane with a fluorine. So this is also a tetrahedral molecule, just like the methane. But because we have different elements surrounding the central atom, I've got hydrogen and a fluorine here, this molecule becomes polar. So when we're looking at the polarity of molecules, we need to look at the shapes of the molecules, and we have to consider whether these shapes are symmetric or asymmetric. The things that cause asymmetry are lone pairs on the central atom or having different elements surrounding the central atom. Understanding polarity is the key to understanding what holds molecules together when gases turn into liquids or when liquids turn into solids. We call these forces intermolecular forces, quite literally the forces between molecules. Inter as a prefix means between, like interstate highway or internet or international. 
the key to intermolecular forces is the polarity. Polar molecules will attract each other. Nonpolar molecules will attract each other. Interestingly, polar molecules do not generally attract nonpolar molecules. So if you're familiar with something being miscible or immiscible, too bad that there's no SAT this year. There's great vocab words there. You can think about things that mix together or don't mix together. So if you've gone to a restaurant with dipping oils for bread, you might have seen balsamic vinegar floating around in olive oil. The vinegar and the oil are immiscible. They don't mix together. Earlier in the year, we would refer to this as a heterogeneous mixture. The reason they don't mix together is because vinegar is made up predominantly of water, which we know to be polar, and olive oil is made up of these long chain molecules, which are generally nonpolar. The polar water molecules are not attracted to the nonpolar oil, and so they don't mix. Chemists use an old saying that likes dissolve likes. So things that are polar will mix things that are polar, and things that are nonpolar will mix with things that are nonpolar. But polar and nonpolar things don't play well together.